Obviously, we buy and wear fragrances for their scent. But there are two other aspects that influence us even more than the scent, especially before we have a chance to smell anything. We're talking about the visual and the tactile. It's also obvious that fragrance brands of all kinds utilize these elements to attract their consumers. They want to control how the bottle looks and feels to you. The look is the most important because it dictates whether or not someone's going to click on a bottle on a website to learn more or whether they will approach a fragrance at the store at the counter to pick it up amongst all the other fragrances in front of them and see what they think. It's also obvious this whole video is just full of obvious things. Color plays a huge role and we've seen notable trends in the designer realm mainly that have really dominated the market at certain points in time or just all together at once. For instance, the color green has historically been used to indicate that a scent might have the smell of the outdoors, maybe earthy, woods, piney, mossy, overall fresh, but something that is marketed more to mature men. Blue is very common in today's market and it's heavily marketed to men, especially young men, as a scent that's gonna smell modern. It's gonna smell clean, it's gonna smell approachable. It might use lots of lavender, lots of metallic notes, lots of citruses, soapy accords. Red is a natural warning color with humans. We're drawn to red, whether it's good or bad, it gets your attention and it can signify that a fragrance is made to make you stand out a bit more. Spicy, warm, sweeter fragrances might come in red. Now pink and purple have been marketed to women a lot through the years and they still are today. And they are made to signify that something will smell characteristically feminine or soft. Maybe florals, fruits, or an overall delicious smelling aroma will dominate the scent. Brown can represent something soft and supple, but masculine, a more gentlemanly profile that is maybe more understated, but still present like leather and suede, soft woods, maybe musk, maybe even some softer earthy tones. Black, black is a special one. Black is often used to convey feelings of mystery and allure. Maybe it's not a scent for everyone. Maybe dark leathers, resins, smoke, and overall darker and deeper tones. Now there's obviously a lot of exceptions here because these are generalizations that I'm making and there's obviously many other colors I'm not mentioning here, but I think these are some of the most widely used across the market. They often apply to the bottle color, but they can even apply to the color of the juice. As time has gone by, I have become more attracted to ambers and oranges and dark browns and those richer tones. I'm a sucker for those shades. If a fragrance has that color, it has my attention. Now let's talk about the shape. Whether a bottle is rounded or angular, symmetrical bottle shapes have dominated the market. It not only makes sense for our naturally patterning mind that looks for patterns and things and also seeks symmetry, but it also helps the bottle often stand upright, which is a more commanding presence, even for an inanimate object. Also, they're made of glass. This makes it so when light hits them, they're very reflective, and that is very naturally eye-catching as well. Sometimes even the simplicity of a bottle can make it iconic, like the Le Labo bottle style. Now, this is a stock bottle. There's other brands that use this bottle style, but this very kind of clinical label that they use on it with the you know, the signature metal cap is very matte, an unmistakable aesthetic. Fragrance doesn't always have a symmetrical design. Something like this. This is called Them from Neanderthal perfumes. This bottle doesn't even stand up. You have to lay it down. It's a very unusual and eye-catching bottle. You see it and you are intrigued by it. You're like, what the heck is that? What kind of fragrance is that? And the scent matches it. It is unusual but beautiful. Now the tactile plays a very important role. Weight often equates to value for many people, even subliminally. A metal cap versus a plastic cap. Which one are you choosing? And with that, magnetic caps can be even more attractive and more appealing. Like Amouage, heavy metal, very strong magnet. Same goes with Dior. A lot of the Sauvage line is magnetic. Even though it is some plastic here, it does have some weight and that strong magnet makes it more appealing for sure. Zaharoff has switched to metal caps in recent years. Fantastic quality. They feel great in the hand. It just adds a feeling of luxury 
and class to the bottles. Also, a thick and heavy base to the bottle can make a big impact in look and feel like Algabra. Their bottles are relatively simple and thin, but that base, there's something about it. It looks sturdy. Same goes with Dior Homme Parfum. You can see all the way around where the juice is contained and that base is thick and heavy. There's just something that feels very premium about it. Having a clear label or plaque allows one to identify a fragrance very clearly, even from afar. So simple bottle designs, both are actually the same cube design from Roger Parfum and from Fragrance Du Bois, but these plaques, you see them from afar, you wanna go up to them and figure out what's going on. They're shiny, they're gold, they're reflective. The labeling is very clear on them, simple, but attractive. Brands can also set themselves apart with unique bottle and cap designs. For instance, the Zaharoff bottle I talked about, this is a custom 3D printed design that George Zaharoff came up with himself. This is not a stock bottle you can go buy from certain manufacturers. And sometimes it can even have some kind of added flourish, a visual flourish that creates a signature look. For instance, Naso di Razza. This is a fragrance called Used Black. I've been getting to know a lovely scent. So opulent, so rich, oud, and a little bit leathery and animalic and spicy and earthy patchouli and a whole lot going on in here. Very rich, not for the faint of heart, but very elegant. And all of their caps have this interesting rubber tube design around them. It's just, it's iconic. You see it and you know what brand it's coming from if you've heard of the brand. In fact, the cap is how a lot of brands set themselves apart. I love the little flourishes that Penhaligon's adds and they are often custom to the fragrance. Like Sartorial has this little bow tie and actually represents what they're going for. More of a dapper gentlemanly fragrance. And then we have Halfetti Cedar has this beautiful like rope and tassel kind of thing going on. A little bit more rustic, which represents the fragrance for sure. All this to say, once again, it's obvious that it is more than just the scent that influences how we spend our money. And I think it's amazing and commendable when brands go to the extra length to create a design that is definitive and maybe even iconic and allows it to stand out and be more than just what you smell, it's an entire experience. The scent, the visual, and the tactile all come together to create the full experience of a fragrance. You may not care about that, that's fine. We haven't even talked about boxes. I know a lot of people don't care about boxes, but it does play a role for a lot of people. So I wanna know what you think of this. Are you heavily influenced by the visual, by the tactile, or do you not care? Would you spray something out of a plastic bottle as long as it smells good to you? Let's have a discussion about it. That's all this video is for. I would love to know. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.